Hello and welcome to the clozapine explanation to patient station. So as you saw in the question, we were dealing with a 46-year-old gentleman who has a diagnosis of a paranoid schizophrenia. Uh, and in the question, we um, are made aware that the patient is treatment resistant. Uh, there's a level of suicide risk. Uh, and our team is now considering the use of clozapine. And our task is to discuss the rationale, the side effects, and uh, address any concerns. So as you're aware, this station brings out the fact that clozapine is reserved for treatment-resistant cases, uh, and that in terms of the rationale, it's it, um, is superior to other antipsychotic treatments that the patient may have been on, and that, um, and that this, the evidence that it's superior has been around for, uh, for a long time. Uh, and that also its efficacy in terms of managing his psychotic symptoms will subsequently help improve his mood uh, and reduce his suicidality. Uh, and then uh, in terms of mentioning side effects, um, stronger candidates would uh, then start to, for each side effect they explain, offer a solution for that side effect. Uh, so for example, weight gain, looking at uh, referral to a dietitian, general exercise program, constipation, use of laxatives, laxatives, etc., etc., just so that um, you're not giving a list of side effects to a patient for that patient then to be overwhelmed as to the, the problems of being on clozapine, but how, how the um, supporting team can help manage those side effects with, with, uh, with solutions. Uh, and also in terms of the, the practicalities of treatment, obviously we need to mention the need for blood tests, um, why, why, why the patient has to have blood tests and the frequency of these uh, as you saw, that's uh, something that I did um, in the station. Uh, and then in, uh, one of the things that that can bring out is, well, how, you know, how am I going to, to um, go to um, the phlebotomist each time to, to get my, my blood taken or, or to the GP surgery to get my blood taken? And then again, we can offer a solution to that to say, well, a support worker from the uh, community mental health team could assist you uh, with that. One of the other things that could also um, occur in a station like this is that a patient may continue to, to say, look, you know, I, this is something I don't want to have. Are there any other alternative um, treatments that I may have? Uh, and that's, again, where we could look at non-pharmacological treatments. So has the patient had any psychological input in the past? And could we use that? Um, um, is that something that he might consider in terms of his ongoing care? But that's only if you're, you're really getting probed as a, as a concern with that. But really, the main focus in this in this station was about explaining the rationale of clozapine and the side effects, and then addressing any of the the common concerns that occur with the medication. So let's have a look at how this particular uh, station was structured. Uh, and so, in terms of the introduction and setting the scene, and as you've seen with um, the lithium augmentation station and with the ECT station, where patients have been on a number of treatments already. Having a sense of empathy about the, the, the frustrations that they've had in terms of not getting better despite being on a number of medications can just help get that initial uh, rapport going. Um, and then similarly, when we start to mention lithium or ECT, or, or, and in this case, clozapine, be, pre be prepared for any cues that the actor might be um, having um, be be waiting to say at that stage to say well you know I've heard clozapine is toxic it kills people that kind of thing uh, and so that you you know you you your 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 task there is then to reassure the patient and then ask permission to say well you know would it be okay if I just explained um, why we're considering clozapine and then I'm very happy to address any concerns that that you might have so so again you saw that um, demonstrated in in this video as well as um, in the the lithium and ECT videos on the course. So I briefly, con um, after introducing myself and setting the scene, I briefly con confirmed his current symptoms uh, and then moved on to mentioning clozapine as, as the, the, the next uh, treatment of choice. Uh, and then went on to explaining the, the, the rationale for clozapine. And as I've said, it's, it's, it's the fact that uh, we know that clozapine is superior to um, other antipsychotics and that evidence has been around for a long time. Um, it's reserved for treatment resistant cases. Um, and helped also improve mood and reduce suicidality in one of his queries as well. Why wasn't I started on this before? Um, so, so 
obviously we say that it's reserved for treatment resistant cases, but also one of the key issues is, is just around the the practicalities of treatment and the and, and the use of blood tests, and then we can then start to move on to um, the 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 side effects and the solutions, and then uh, at that stage, then then um, talk to them as to as to why this is a, a medication that's 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 reserved in this case. Uh, and then, as you saw on the the station, so for each side effect, um, I gave a remedy for that at the time of, of mentioning that particular side effect. So, so for sedation. So generally, as patients, t uh, the longer that patients are on medication, their levels of sedation tend to improve, uh, and it's important that they have a set of structured activities in the week to, to keep them active to, to help manage that. Uh, in terms of weight gain, uh, we'd, we'd need to look at um, assisting him with his diet, with the guidance of a dietitian, and also look at the introduction of a, a general exercise programme. But we'd be continuing to monitor um, his weight um, to, to advise him on that. If there's an issue around um, his bowels not opening regularly and he gets constipated, then we can use laxatives. Similarly, if he's um, having issues of um, excessive salivation, uh, then we can give him some medications to uh, to suck to, to, to help with that. Uh, and then in terms of the, the blood tests, we're using blood tests to monitor his white cell count. Does he know what the white cells do? They they're there to help to help him fight infection, and we need to we need to monitor the white cell counts. Is is because obviously, as you know, the um, clozapine can reduce the number of, of white cells in our system, uh, and so we need to monitor his uh, his blood initially weekly for the first eighteen weeks, then fortnightly for the rest of the year, and then monthly subsequent to that. One of the things also to um, to be mindful of is if you're dealing with a patient who does suffer with uh, with paranoid ideation, is the use of a of the monitoring service uh, because you don't want them to become even more paranoid about the fact that their blood's being sent somewhere to be to be monitored, uh, and so you could see that I was um, uh, careful in the way that I'd. Um, delivered that information to him and that I said that this is a, it's a fail safe method for us to ensure that he's not dispensed clozapine um, in, in the presence of an abnormal blood result. Uh, and then we've also mentioned obviously the, the support worker to assist with him going to blood tests uh, and then uh, and then obviously all the other classic lines of offering information leaflets um, and then I think one of the things also that um, that you shouldn't be put off on is if the patient is still reluctant uh, about being on clozapine, uh, because as you saw in this station, you know he didn't seem that he didn't seem convinced uh, to be wanting to start at the end of the scenario, and, and so don't let that put put you off because the the actor may have been scripted to to just not be um, agreeable to 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 start in clozapine. So um, so even if you feel that you've delivered the information as best as you can. In bite-sized chunks, delivered and you know, um, checked understanding, um, address their concerns. You know, they, as I said, they they may be scripted to be just uncertain, and so don't let that put you off. As long as you know that you you know you've you've attempted the task to the best of your ability, um, you know that you you know, you've you you can move on um, to the next station. Okay, so let's just quickly look at some of the the script lines, um, uh, the relevant script lines for this station. Um, so. Uh, so initially, as we said, in terms of our introduction, I've got some information as to what's been happening. As it sounds like you've had a very frustrating time on being a number of different tablets with no real success. Uh, so that can really just help the um, the rapport going when you when you're when you're in stations like this. I'm here to talk to you today regarding another treatment option that we do have available. Before I do, could I ask about how things are at the moment, just so you're getting an idea of, uh, and, and, and again, we don't want to be spending too much time on this, we just want to get um, a brief idea of what their current symptoms are. Uh, and then and then we can start to mention, would it be okay if I spoke to you about a medication called, uh, we, we're, you know, prior to that, obviously the, one of the medications I'd like to talk to you today is about a medication called clozapine. And then as I said at that point, be prepared for um Oh, I've heard it's toxic, I've heard it can kill people, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I, see, I can see that you have a number of concerns there. Would it be okay if I spoke to you about clozapine? And then I'd be very happy to answer any queries that you may have. Uh, and then again, so you know, clozapine is one of the most effective antipsychotics that we, that we do have available. The evidence um, is that the evidence that is um, effective is, is long-standing um, and is superior to the other antipsychotics that you've, that you've been on. 
uh, and it or, you know, it shows that it works more effectively than other medications that you've been on uh, in the past. There is also evidence that it can help improve mood as well as reduce suicidal thinking. And then, as you've seen with other stations on the course, when I'm talking about side effects, I, I try to deliver that information in, in a structured way. Um, so, you know, so there are a range of side effects with, with this particular medication that can range from the, uh, the common mild ones to, to some more severe ones that, 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 are, that are rare. And so I'd, so I'd, I'd structured that, um, the delivery of that, of, of that information um, similarly as, as, as you've seen on other videos um, um, on the course. Uh, and then obviously also mentioning that one of the things that we, we do need to do is register your name so that uh, your bloods are monitored and it's a recognised system that provides a, a fail-safe system to ensure that you're not provided clozapine with, with an abnormal blood test result. And so, you're, you're, and so you, you can say it's a national system, it's recognised so that there's nothing for him to, um, to be worried about um, in terms of where that, where that blood is going. So if you want to get some more information around um, some of the relevant core clinical knowledge on, on um, clozapine, so there is another station on clozapine uh, where we're looking at um, taking a collateral history from a relative um, to address someone's clozapine suitability. Um, so um, do have a look at that tutorial uh, and uh, obviously practice this one in conjunction with that. Uh, and I will see you in the next tutorial.